Well, good morning, Catch the Fire Berry. Here we are outside meeting together real people. I love it. It's a beautiful day here in Berry. The temperature is perfect. There's a little bit of a breeze. And we trust that the breeze of the Holy Spirit, the wind of the Holy Spirit, will just cover us again. Now, we are going to be going into a time of worship, as is our custom, because we want to glorify the one who loves us. We want to spend a, a chunk of time just glorifying him. But we also want you to know, those of you that are here in person, you probably recognize we can't really put a screen up. It just won't show up in the sunshine. But what you can do is if you have a smartphone or a tablet and you can hook into YouTube, type in Catch the Fire Berry and then look for the live feed, you will be able to see the words to the songs. How cool is that? Isn't technology fantastic? So if you've forgotten your, your smartphone today, uh, in, in future, just bring it and type in Catch the Fire Berry, live feed, and away we go. So thank you, Lord. It is so good to be outside again. It is so good to be with each other. Thank you for our family. And we just invite your wonderful Holy Spirit afresh just to fall on us. Lord, let there be always increase in terms of our walk with you and our love for you. Let there be an awareness in our own spirits of how much you love us continually. We thank you for today, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that uh, your spirit would be over Rob and, and Jody as they lead us in worship. Father, may you be glorified in and through it all. In Jesus' name, amen. Over to you, Rob.
such grace I will let the walls come down
Darkness tries to roll over my bones Sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know No, I won't be shaken
died upon the cross You're my Jesus who loves me You poured out all your blood You died upon the cross You are my Jesus who loves me And you are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song
Thank you, Jesus. Show. Shabareyara. Whoa. Shabareyara. Shikaratara. Shoko. Yeah, thank you for your presence here right now. Shabareyara. Shikaratara. Sokorotoro. Shakaratariyatara. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, God, just let your presence fall right now. Whoa. Shoo. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, spread the joy. Whoa. Yeah, spread the joy. <laughs> Whoa, Shaka. Shoo. <laughs> Shoo! Ho! Fire! <laughs> Whoa! Shaka! Ho! Shaba! <laughs> Whoa! Spread your joy, God! Whoa! Fire! 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 Whoa! Shaka! <laughs> Whoa! Show! Whoa! <laughs> Whoa, I just feel God is saying that today's a day to celebrate. <laughs> just give him a hand. Just clap, show for him. Thank you, Jesus. Show for him. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! We love you. We love you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Whoa, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Whoa. Thank you that church is not boring, that it's not quiet, God, that we are here to celebrate. We're here to have fun, that you've allowed us to come together and that we can be so thankful for the things that you're doing for us, God, that you're so good. Whoa. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, Jesus, that we can celebrate that you freed us from so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Thank you. <laughs> I just feel like he wants our feet to be moving and us to just be celebrating today. Whoa, Shaka. <laughs> oh, freedom on every single one of us here. Whoa, freedom, 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 freedom. Shoo. Shaba. Yeah, thank you, Jesus, that we are so free from everything in our past and everything that's going on in the world, God, that you have freed us from. Shoo. Amen. Woo. Woo. Yeah. Do a dance. He's free to you. Woo. We shouldn't be sad, man. We're the freest people in the world. Woo. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. chains just gone behind you we're free <laughs> whoa shoo thank you god that christians are the most joyful people that we have all the joy because it comes from you woo, 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 woo. amen yes god is so good i'm so happy you are here Thank you, Jesus, for smiles in everyone's faces <laughs> and the love and the joy and the connection that we share here that we're able to get together and we're able to celebrate. Thank you, God, for your goodness, for your love. Oh, you're so good. Shoo! Whew. Just shoot the person next to you with some fire. Shoo, shoo, shoo! Whoa, Shaka! <laughs> Woo! Fire, fire, fire! <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Woo! Woo! Shaka! Ho! She! <laughs> oh, amazing. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, so great. Thank you, everyone, for being here. We're so happy. Oh, we got the joy of the Lord. It's a good day. We pray for no sunburns, just tans. Amen. <laughs> the, the anointing of, of tan skin is here. 
Amen. <laughs> if there's like 10 angels, we just call them out. <laughs> Protect us from the sun. That'd be great. Awesome. And yeah, so Jeremy's going to come on up. Start the day. <laughs> Thank you so much, Grace. Now, there's just a difference in, in people being live and involved. It's, it's just so much better. But I would like to say for those that are watching online, we just bless you. We're so glad that you came to join us online. We want to encourage you. We are, and we are going to be open. Unless the government changes some crazy things, and I don't think they will, we plan to be here. If it rains, inside. But planning throughout the summer, we're, we're, we'd like to go in. Just, just enjoy the outside. Would that be good? All right, some quick announcements. Um, a, a conference, a wake conference with John and Carol uh, is going to be happening on July 10th and 11th. We're still just holding off registrations until we get a couple other things uh, worked out, but it is going to be happening. Yay. All right, and Stan and Grace, I'm going to come right back up and tell us a little bit more about the School of Ministry that's going to be happening in September. Woo! Woo! Yes, um, so we were privileged enough to be asked by um, the Toronto School of Ministry if we would be interested and willing to host a School of Ministry hub here in Barrie. So naturally, we excitedly said yes. Um, so we're so excited that um, we get to partner with them. Um, it is going to be a 12-week consecutive program. Um, it's going to be mainly online modules with one day a week with Grace and myself um, going through some activations um, and doing some outreach activities um, in Barry, getting involved in church. Um, both of us have been at the School of Ministry in Toronto and we're asked a small group lead, so we are well indoctrinated into the incredible life changes that happen when you take School of Ministry. Um, so even if you're not looking at being a minister, um, School of Ministry is an incredible opportunity to get teaching from world-class teachers, to get healing of the heart, um, to learn to prophesy, hear God's voice. Um, really, it's just a um, a, a growing process for you in your spirit, and it is incredible. Um, I don't know if I could say much more about it. Um, they will register by reaching us at barry at catchthefire.com. Um, just let us know that you're interested, and we will get that out to you. It is scheduled to start in September, um, so... We would love to have any of you that are interested in taking part in Catch the Fire Barry yeah. School of Ministry. Come on. Yeah. All, ages. All ages. All ages, yes, from 18 up, that is. All ages are welcome to do that. All right. Uh, we also have the, our, our family Zoom this coming Friday. And I want to encourage anyone that just wants just a little bit more of him to just tune in. Um, we every week send out the link for it, so it's there on, on your uh, computer, uh, and please feel free to join in. It'll be 7.30. It's the first Friday and the third Friday of every month that we just get together. Um, unfortunately, we got a message from Lillian to say she has TMJ, which is a, a, a jaw disorder, and it's just really, really painful for her to speak. And so we just blessed her to stay home and, and get better. We have lots of grace here, right? Very good, very good. So my wonderful wife will be stepping in at, at the last minute for, for uh, Lillian. But we also want to just share with you that um, Martin Elvidge will be our speaker next week. And so we're really looking forward to seeing him again. That'd be really good. Okay, Sam, come on back up. You're a busy man. Losing those COVID pounds with the ups and downs. Uh, it is going to be offering time. Yeah. Woo! If you're watching online, you didn't see, but they did a really cool wave, and everyone's so excited to give this morning. Um, so offering is an incredible time where we really get to partner with the kingdom. We get to um, enter in financially to what God is doing. And I have said it almost every time I've been up here, but especially being in the finance office um, at the church here, I've seen how week after week and month after month, we're not only reaching um, financial goals, but we're exceeding them. And it's been incredible to see what God has been able to do with COVID. We had no Zoom before COVID, no online church. Churches. All of this is just God's favor. 
And we get that incredible opportunity to partner with him financially, to let him into that scary world of our finances, um, and let him do what he does best, which is multiply, which is bless, which is provide peace. Um, so this morning, if you do have an offering with you physically, um, you can also give via um, push pay or e-transfers to Barry at catchthefire.com. If you do have it in person, do we have, we have an... A box over there with Trudy um, to do checks or cash. But if you have it physically or digitally, just hold your phone or your envelope in your hand and we are going to bless this incredible offering this morning. So God, we just thank you for the ability to partner with you. We, we thank you for... Um, yeah, the opportunity to just sow into your kingdom, that God, the blessing isn't just for the kingdom, but it's for yourself as well. It's for, for the growth um, of what you're doing in this season, God. So we just, we commit this offering to you wherever you see that it needs to go. We just release it with joy in our hearts because we know, God, that you are faithful. So God, we just thank you this morning for what you are doing with our offering, and we just bless this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. And am I introducing? I'm introducing Connie. What an honor. I'll even bring you out your podium. Right under the tent, of course, out of the sun. Well, it gives me great pleasure to be able to introduce um, one of our senior pastors, um, the incredible, the lovely... <laughs> Um, yeah, if you guys want to just stretch your hands out to Connie, Lord, we just thank you for the message that you have already appointed for this morning. We thank you, Lord, that she would be um, a facilitator of what you've already ordained. We thank you for everyone here, that they were destined and appointed to be here to hear what Connie has to release. So we just pray in boldness and we pray in um, just a heart in tune with what you have for all of us this morning. Thank you, Father. Whoa, whoa. Over to you. Thank you. Whoa, whoa. Well, God's always full of surprises, isn't he? <laughs> and I'll tell you, the one thing he's been trying to teach us over and over and over again in this pandemic is to be flexible, isn't it? How many have learned to be flexible? If you haven't, then it's time to shake that up. Because we, that's one of the things he wants, it's a skill he wants us to learn is to be flexible. Well, I'll tell you, it hasn't been easy for me um, this week. I've only had like, three or four days' notice. And in the midst of the three or four days' notice were also when I finally got my grandchildren for two days to stay with me at my house, the first time since last summer. Whoa, so I had to give them lots of attention. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> the grandparents out there, thank you. Yes, you understand. And it's, um, but I think I'm supposed to prepare a message too. You know, on top of that. So the, the Lord's stretching me, but right away he started to download and said, haven't I already been talking? Haven't I already been speaking? Haven't I already been saying things over the last few weeks again? And it's, so he's just saying, just reiterate and kind of tie it together. So I want to do that and um, tie in the messages, of Steve's message last week on grace, Jeremy teaching on faith, Jeremy and the... Um, on the uh, family Zoom meeting was talking about declarations, um, just all the things that we've been hearing and that God's been speaking to each one of us. It's like he's saying, do you get it? Do you get it? There's a puzzle he wants us to put together today in order to see what he's trying to say. And because we are coming into a new time. I mean, yeah, it is so excited. I'm so, I am so excited today to be together with all of you. We're, we're together as a church again. It's been a long time. It's been a long time, a long, long haul. And I, I sense that um, it's not going to be, we're not going to get shut down quite a, the same way again um, over the next little while, but we might get some shutdowns. We might have some things. I think things are going to change. I think things are going to change. Some things are going to change for the better. Some things are going to change for the worse. Because we believe, how many believe the Bible? Okay, some, uh, two people, yep. Okay. <laughs> and in the book of Revelation, it says that there's lots of worse things coming. How many can say, yay? yay. Come on, let me hear it. <laughs> and the reason we say yay is because we, again, experience these things in a whole different way than those who don't know the Lord. 
Isn't that right? Just like today, I, the, the songs chosen were just great, Rob and Jody. That was awesome. Just, just awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Um, because it's, again, one of them on grace. His grace is enough. Do we believe it? Do we believe it? Like we can say the words and sing the words, his grace is enough. Has his grace been enough for you over this last year and a half of COVID? Again, a couple of people saying yes. Well, there are times it's been trying though, right? And they think, oh, is his grace enough? It's a time to test it. God's been testing our belief system like crazy over the last while, saying, are these just your words? Is this just your belief system, but are you actually living it? Are you actually walking it out? Is it real? He's calling us to an authenticity in our relationships, relationships with him, with each other, an authenticity of what we believe and acting it out. And that's something that he really wants us to catch because he's saying... You don't want to have to go through another shutdown, do you? <laughs> I don't. Um, do you, you know, he's testing us, trying us. He's saying he wants us to, to teach us patience and perseverance. Have you learned to persevere during this year? We've been pushed to, to really, and tested, haven't we, to really say, okay, I want to build that perseverance. i got to hang in for a few more weeks before we can have church. A few more weeks before I can see my grandkids. A few more weeks, you know, before I can go shopping. Whatever it is that's important to you in this time. But there's, it's like building that perseverance, Scripture says, so it builds character within us. God is getting us ready, and we know that there's wonderful things coming up that he's getting us ready for. I said, it may not look like what we'd like. Maybe we're going to have more restrictions. Maybe we'll have more junk, yucky stuff. But at the same time, it's, if that's what it takes in order for us to be able to come into more of his glory, is that worth it? Is that worth it? To have more of his glory, more of his presence, more of reliance upon him, more of his joy and his peace. Yeah. Yes, yes, because like Isaiah 60, 1 to 3 says that when the dark gets darker, his glory shines all the brighter. His glory is rising upon us. His glory is increasing over us as the dark gets darker. And so there's a glory that is for us as we press into the things that he has for us coming up. Now, there's, it's interesting that before COVID happened, I don't know about you, but I was listening to so many of the prophetic words, and so many of the words were saying, we're, you know, in 2020, we're going to enter a new era. And I'm thinking, oh, that's kind of a dramatic word to use. You know, do you ever do that with prophetic words you hear? You say, oh, I don't know about that. Well, I thought, yeah, you know, we're changing into another year, but what makes it different than any other year where things change? Well, it certainly did change in a whole different way than we expected. And they were right, it's just a whole new era. We are moving into a whole new era. Um, Tim Sheets has written a book called The New Era of Glory. Wow, how many want to take that one? Yes, we're stepping into a new era of his presence and of his glory. What is that going to look like? How do we get there? What is he teaching us along the way to get to that place? We're on a journey with him, a journey to get to that place. And so I was, when I was uh, thinking about this message today, he reminded me of a message that I had given before, so I'm going to take a, just a tidbit from that, and that is that uh, crossing the Jordan, you know, in Joshua chapters 3 to 5, it's talking about the story about crossing, children of Israel crossing the Jordan River. They're gone to their promised land. How many of you have some promises that are not fulfilled yet? Uh -huh. How many of us have heard those prophetic words that God has wonderful things coming up for us? Uh-huh, right? His promises, the promised land. That's what we're crossing over into. And so we want to learn some of those things and apply it to this situation. If you want to hear the whole teaching on the Jordan, uh, crossing the Jordan, then um, it, 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 I'm sure it's an audio still on the uh, website. But I'm just going to pull little tidbits out of it. And that is that when they were... Uh, getting ready to cross the Jordan. First, they were camping out. All them camping out, they camped out for three days waiting for that word that we're going to move out. How many have been waiting for more than three days? <laughs> Maybe like a year and a half for this one, right? 
And we've been waiting and waiting and waiting and to hear the word of the Lord to say, okay, move out. And then they got the word, but that when they were told to move out, better move over, I'm tripping on that. <laughs> Cement block there. Okay. Um, in Joshua 3, verses 3 to 4, it says, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the Levitical priest carrying it, you're to move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go, since you've never been this way before. Whoa, have we ever been this way before? We're going into such unusual terrain. We've never been in, in, walking through anything like this before. We don't know what's coming yet that, again, might be very unusual for us. We've never been this way before. However, it says, it's when you see the Ark of His presence, the Ark of His covenant. Do you have a covenant relationship with God? Yeah, if you've asked Jesus into your life, he's made a covenant with you. He's made a covenant to be with you, to stick with you, no matter what happens, to go through the, the trials with you. Um, he's, he will never leave you or forsake you. He's a covenant-keeping God, a promise-keeping God, isn't he? He's made that with you, and it's his presence, the ark of his presence that says, when it goes, follow it wherever he's going. He's trying to teach us to follow his lead. That means we're going to have to need to know how to hear his voice even better than before. He's, so many people I've heard of saying, when I say, well, what, what have you learned during this time? It's like, oh, I've come into a much deeper intimacy with God. You know, that tucking into him while I've been locked down in my home, but it's like getting closer to him, and there's this special intimacy that's grown. I see a couple of heads nodding. Yeah, that's you. And it's, um, it's, again, when he's in that, um, his presence becomes so much more real to you, so much more authentic, as I was saying before, not just words. In, in this time of having to rely on him and trust on him, trust in him. And then it says when he moves, when we follow that leading and his nudging, then that's when we're going to get through over to where our promises are. So we need to tune in to listen and to hear and follow that lead. Um, he also said to purify themselves in verse 5. Consecrate yourselves. Set yourself apart for God and say, God, it's your purpose, it's your plan. That's what I want to follow. And it says, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow. We don't know what tomorrow looks like, but as we look to it. For tomorrow, the Lord will do amazing things among you. Woohoo! Again, one of his promises as we cross over, that he will do those amazing things. Those are like promises given. Those are prophetic words given. Have people spoken prophetic words over you that you know are words from God, but they haven't, you haven't seen the fulfillment yet? Those are things that he wants us to be able to walk into. Um, and when those words are given, it builds our faith. But with, uh, Jeremy was, when Jeremy was talking about faith, he's talking about the fact it actually takes action. Faith isn't just your belief system. You act on it. Faith and, and action have to go together, and it says that um, actually in, in the book of James. I'll get there in just a second again now. But step out in faith. Take action. So the Is Levites had to step out. In fact, the leaders had to go first, and they had to put their toes in the water. They all had to head in that direction. Where are they going? They're walking in the direction of this river. If you can imagine, the Jordan River at that time said was at flood stage. It was that time of harvest, and it's the time of the year when it was just, the current was raging. And here they go walking towards the river to go through it. Like, that's a step of faith, if you ask me. And then to put their feet in it. And it wasn't until the leaders put their feet into the water, getting into it, that then it said that the water piled up in a heap and stopped flowing so that it became dry land for them to cross over. But they had to take a step of faith first, and often God asks us to take that step of faith. Don't lose that thought, because we're going to come back to that one, about whatever it is that God's promised to you. Because we're going to be asking God, what is it that he wants you to do to step out in an act of faith for the things that he's promised you? Is there an action he wants you to take? So the Levites, the leaders, went out ahead of it, Joshua 4, 4 to 7, uh, says, Go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites, to serve as a sign among you. So there's one uh, Levite from each 
you know, of, that represented each of the tribes, the 12 tribes carrying this stone, says these stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. In other words, there are things, stones and memorials, you pick up along the way before you get to the other side that he wants to take with you, wants you to take with us. And they took those stones when they got to the other side. They built them as an altar before the Lord, and they said it so that you can tell your children what's happened. We, we need to explain to that next generation. I mean, I, I think it's fun to have even some of the pictures, you know, like a wedding picture we did for Heidi and Renee. And one of the wedding pictures, he said, okay, now put your masks on. This is a COVID wedding. This is monumental. We want to remember that God did marvelous things when he united them together in the middle of COVID. It's something you can carry forward with you. Again, it's all those things that you're learning along the way. Don't forget them. Don't just say, oh, forget it. I didn't, those were horrible years. I'm going to put that aside and never think of it again. No, what marvelous things did God do for you? What, what miracles has he done for you? You know, we've got testimonies of things God's been doing behind the scenes. And that we don't want to forget the lessons learned along the way. So pick up those stones and carry them with you, okay? Okay, so let's keep going here. Uh, Joshua 4.24 says, He did this so that all the peoples of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful and so that you might always fear the Lord your God. It's to, it's to build your faith, make you stronger, and also so that you can tell uh, your testimonies. And that's what's going to cause people to want to come to know him when they see the marvelous works that he's done. So crossing, and we're talking about crossing into that new era, the new era of glory. Um, Isaiah 43, 19 says, See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it sp springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Now, this was written by Isaiah, that, you know, that he was quoting what God was sing saying, that he was doing a new thing. This was at a time they're just coming out of the Babylonian exile. I mean, we talk about being in lockdown. Can you imagine the Babylonians with the, the harsh Bab um, the Israelites during the time with the Babylonians, the harsh ruling of the, of the uh, Babylonians, that they were made as slaves, and horrible things that would happen to them there. And God was bringing them out, just like he's bringing us out of lockdown, and saying, I'm doing a new thing now. Um, don't you perceive it? How many have perceived that he's been doing a new thing? I think we all have. If we haven't seen that he's doing something new, then, uh, you know, I think we need to take blinders off because it's pretty obvious. God wants to do something brand new. But he promises to make a way in the wilderness. How many have felt like you've been in a wilderness in that long waiting period? Right? Some of you have, right? It's like, oh, it's this wilderness time. And some people have said, I've gone through dryness spiritually. For one thing, we haven't been able to be together to encourage each other, lift each other up, pray for each other, minister to each other. We haven't been able to do that. And so some people have found that you know, in this alone time, they've found that they've actually struggled in their spiritual life feeling really dry. Maybe you're going to, through that wilderness. But I'll see, he says he'll provide streams in the wasteland. Now, Rick Joyner, um, I can't remember which book it is. Is it called The Path, I think? Rick Joyner wrote a book that had a brilliant little thing in it. And it was this guy who was on a journey, and he was going to the promised land, which was really heaven that he was heading towards, getting off of this big cruise ship. But he's getting walking, and he's going, going through terrible trials to get there, to get to that promised land. And he was suffering, and times he didn't know if he was going to make it. And finally, he got to a point where he came across a place, a pool of water, and he could drink and get refreshed. And then he was told, now go back. Go back and get others and bring them with you. Help them to know how to get here, too. And so when he went back, it's like the revelation that had been given to him is like, why have you been struggling so hard to get here? Don't you know that all the way, you know, just on the other side of the trees, all the way along, there's this river. And all you have to do is go and drink in that river. And he would drink, and it would be so life-giving. It wasn't just regular water. It was the water of life. And he'd be so refreshed and revived and energized. And then it's like, why didn't I know to do that all along? I thought, that's like us. You know, sometimes we're struggling and striving, and it's, oh, so hard. We haven't been drinking from the water of life. 
The river that's right there beside us, if we'll just turn and drink, will energize us as we go on our journey again. So he promises that he was, would give us that, um, set the, the way in the wilderness, point the way, show us the ways to go, but give you streams to drink from. Are you th anybody thirsty? Yes, we can never get enough of that living water, can we? And it's right there and available for us. All right, so um, Isaiah 44, verse 7, the last half of it, out of this, I'm going to read this on the Passion Translation. Because again, we don't know what things are going to look like on the other side of this river when we go on the Jordan River, right? Crossing into this new normal. That's the, one of those new expressions, right? And well, you know, I've been really challenging myself and challenging other people to say, what is your new normal? What, what have you picked up that's going to be normal for you now? You know, someone that's been really struggling with sickness, and it's kind of when, when you are struggling for a long time, it's like you've got a condition, you know, and you kind of own it. And it's like you expect it. This is, this is the condition I've lived with for so long. Yes, I believe God's going to heal me someday, but right now I've got this condition. And it's like, no, what's going to be your new normal? Are you going to accept that and say, that's, that's what my normal life is right now? No, it's like I'm going to start declaring and saying, I'm going to live a new normal. I'm going to choose to believe I'm not going to have that sickness any longer. I want God's health. I want his healing. And that's what I want to declare is my health. It's like, no, I'm in the process of getting healed right now. Even if I don't see the evidence right now, I'm, I'm in the process. I'm going to, to step towards my healing right now. And that's sometimes why when we pray for people that are sick, we say, okay, do something you couldn't before. And I've, I mean, we've had people say, oh, but, you know, we say, oh, like, move your leg. Oh, but I can't do that. You know, that's the problem, right? Well, you know, well, try, move your leg. No, I can't do that. Well, if you don't try, how are you ever going to get past that? That's your, it's a barrier we have to actually stepping into that healing. Sometimes we have to try to do something we've never done before. And then in that process of it, then we receive that healing. It's taking action to go with our faith. Okay, so who, Isaiah 44, 7b, Passion Translation. Who else has announced from everlasting what is to come? Because only the Lord is God. Only God can predict the future. No, no man can predict the future. Even Satan doesn't know what's coming. You know, only what's been revealed you know, to, to us through the word of God or anything like that that's available for him. He doesn't know what's going to happen down the future. Only God can predict the future. Does man try to play God? Oh, yeah. I mean, sometimes we do in our own lives try to play God and try to predict our future and, and uh, as well. But um, right now, we're in a situation where it seems like man is really strategizing, trying to direct where we are going globally right now. There are a lot of things behind the scene. Man trying to play God and trying to control that future. Only God can do that. Psalm 2, verses 1 to 8, says that God laughs at the plans of man. He laughs at it because he says he has installed his own king. Yay, King Jesus. And it says that is the Lord's decree. Kings and rulers, they might say one thing, but only God can, is the true king. And I'm so glad of that. That's, that's our security, isn't it? Our safety, our rock that we can stand on. He knows what he's doing. And he's the one who's going to predict the future. Yeah, men can mess up things along the way, and they're, they're doing it. You know, we do a pretty good job of it sometimes in our life too, don't we? Messing things up by trying to make our own choices and decisions. But God knows what the future is going to bring. Um, like sometimes we think, well, it looks like, I don't know if you felt this, but sometimes it feels like Satan's got the upper hand right now. You know, things are moving in the wrong direction very quickly. Um, morally, economically, all kinds of ways. We could just go on and on about things that we might, we all have our opinions of what things are going downhill fast, right? But, um, you know, uh, Satan might look like he has the upper hand right now, but he's actually only playing into the purposes of God. He is, because God's got a plan. And I was thinking about this as far as when Jesus came the first time. Um, he came revealed as one man, come, God coming to dwell with us. 
and walking this earth for 33 years doing his works and preaching the kingdom. Um, and when he was killed and crucified, they were saying, well, come on, you convince me not to kill you because I'm the one that holds the power here. And he's saying, no, you don't. I give up my life freely. You know, this is God's plan. This is, this is his intention all along. Come on, do something about it. Kill me. Really, that's what he was saying. He says, I'm laying my life down. And he played into God's hands. These, the people, the authorities that were actually against him were playing into God's hands in order to crucify him. You see, he had to die. He had to be crucified to fulfill the plans and purposes of God and the purpose for which he was sent. And that says he had to die so he could rise again. How do you rise again if you don't die? You know, and... And so he, he knew he needed to rise again, which would conquer death once and for all, and win freedom for us, win total freedom over sin and death and all the works of the enemy and the evil things through what he did on the cross. It was vitally important that he died. And I thought, you know what? I was thinking about this this week, and I thought, there are an awful lot of similarities between Jesus' first coming and when he comes the second time. What I mean is there are a lot of prophetic words, many, many, there are like 200 so, some prophetic words of Jesus coming, and a number of them have been fulfilled to a point. The rest of it's going to be fulfilled when Jesus returns, and in these last days. There's so many last days verses that I love to read knowing, okay, I know that that's just for our time period now, because things are starting to really happen now. As we head towards Jesus second coming, his second return. And so some things are going to be even very similar. And I thought, well, the first time, though, Jesus had to die in order to be raised again. Well, what does he keep telling us that we keep trying to push away and trying to... You know, do you know that... Do you have some verses that you don't like? Anybody have some of those verses you wish weren't in there? Come on, you admit it. You admit it. There's some. Yeah, there we go. And this one about dying to self... How many like that verse? Uh, now I'm not seeing any hands. Okay. We have to die in order to live. We have to die in order to be res resurrected into newness of life. We have to die to self. We're supposed to die to the world. We're supposed to die to the world systems. Well, that's one thing COVID is really helping to accomplish. We're starting to die to the things we thought were so important and realizing what the real priorities are. You know, there, there are a lot of people, I, I think of, well, Grace and Sam, for instance, got married last October. Yay! And it, they had to limit the number of people. And that, in some ways, was very sad. But we had enough of us that we had a good time, didn't we? <laughs> and we went to the cottage to have, it was much simpler. I've heard so many people that have gotten married during COVID, because we did like, either six or seven weddings last summer alone. And it's during COVID. And it's, the weddings were much simpler. But, you know, in the end, so many of them saying, you know, that was so much nicer. Because we could focus on why we really wanted to do this. We just want to be together. You know, people that had, had planned on huge weddings. Well, maybe they'll still have a big, huge party to celebrate yet. But the simplicity is like, okay, what is really important here? Maybe you've had to evaluate that. What things are important in your life? Are there some things that you've had to lose along the way? because of COVID. Maybe it's, again, some of you shoppers. Some people had, you know, I need have a need for shopping therapy right about now, right? That, you know, that, and, it, and finding it, you know, we can do with a lot less. Yeah, it's a little harder sometimes, but it's like, oh, we can get by. There are a lot of things that we're being challenged as far as what is really valuable, what is really important to you. When we've been deprived of uh, having getting together and seeing our family and our and um, our friends, we've valued, realized the value of relationship and of family, of being together, of to worship together. Like that's why we cheered the way we did today, right? It's like yes, we can finally be together. Yay, we can worship together. We treasure it all the more. So we picked up the things that are of true value, and they become even more valuable. We see them for the treasure that they are, and we can let go of things that are not so valuable after all. And again, that's one thing that the Lord's really trying to, to, um, uh, to do in us, causing us to die some of those things so we're ready for the new era. 
So we're ready for the new heavens and the new earth that's going to look really different. So we've, we're still on a journey before we get to the new heavens and the, the new earth. And so he's, again, getting rid of stuff from the earthly realm out of our hearts, out of our um, value system. The things, it's like our attachments to the things of the world that he wants us to let go of and attach ourselves to the true things that are really important in the kingdom of God. So I was saying, in order to walk into this new era, we need a new normal. What's it going to look like for you as an individual? What's it going to look like for us as a church? What, what about church globally? What's going to be our new normal? We know we can't get, go back to the same. Again, he's shaken up church so much. We've, we love our new hybrid model, we call it. And that is even down at the hub where we might have... You know, we can only be limited to 10 people. Okay, well, we'll have the 10 people socially distanced and spaced out in the hub. That's how we can fit socially distanced. But we can put on the, the TV screen with the Zoom, and people can connect in from all over the place. Um, Steve is thrilled that it's someone that, a pastor in India, right, that he had, he got, Steve went there in 2010 to minister and connected with a pastor there. Well, he started attending the men's group now. He still lives in India. I, mean, I think that's marvelous. You know, the limitations are off. Again, people that are watching online right now, maybe you're from another distant place too. And it's like um, the limitations have come off with that. So there are wonderful things in our new normal that we will keep for sure. But I don't think he's finished with us yet. We're still in that journey. We're still going to have to take that step of faith and put our feet in the water and act on faith on the things that he's given us, the promises that he's given to us. There's still a journey to go yet. In fact, when with the children of Israel, when they got over to the promised land, you know what happened? It was full of the enemy. And it was full of wild beasts and full of wild terrain that hadn't been tamed. And so the Lord just told them to go one little step at a time. He said, you know, just conquer this one area first before you go to the next. Otherwise, it's too much for you. I mean, if we looked at what's going to come in the future, that's way too much for us. It's like, no, leave me here now. <laughs> no, there's this, God wants you to conquer some areas. And he will take you and take us as a church, take us as Christians generally, take us as the world, take us into the next step. And he promises his presence will go with us if we ask him to, if we follow his lead. And then we can conquer that terrain with him in a manageable peace. Isn't that nice to know? He won't give you more than what you can manage, he says. But in manageable pieces, he'll help us to conquer and move forward into our promised land. But in order to, for us to have our new normal, there's some things I'm going to bring out, the things tying together again, the things that he's been teaching us lately. Um, we're going to need new ways of thinking, new ways of seeing things, new ways of doing things in our new normal. It's, it's a whole change of perception that we're going to need. And some of us are fighting that. It's like, no, I wait until we get back to normal, back to what we had. Well, that's, that's not our new normal. Even the government's letting is prophetic enough to know that's not going to be our normal. <laughs> but things are going to really change. And we want to, to say, okay, Lord, what is my new normal so that I can go into the promised land, so that I can conquer the areas you're leading me into. So new ways of thinking, new ways of seeing things, new ways of doing things. In other words, you and I need some transformation. Anybody feel like you need some transformation? How many feel you've had a lot of transformation over the last year and a half? Raise your hand, shake it up. Yes, huge number of people. We've gone through incredible transformation personally and as a church, but there's a lot more to go. Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. I want to discern what God's will is. That's what I want to step into. That's the territory I want to step into because then I know that I will conquer that land. He will empower me in it if I'm going in the places that he wants me to. So in this new normal, we know that there have been prophetic words spoken about a new wave of the Holy Spirit coming. I mean, who has, who's heard that word? 
right? We've the, a new huge wave. Many prophetic people have seen it like a wave. I've seen a huge wave, and uh, many of us have. We know there's a wave of the Holy Spirit coming. Now, sometimes we think, okay, I just have to wait it out. Wait and wait patiently. Maybe this is, in COVID, this is my waiting time. That wait for God to finally move. Well, except that there's, again, with faith comes action. In other words, there's stuff he wants us to do. And, you know, certainly in Scripture one time, I was looking through to see what kind of things he was requiring of us and what things he wanted me to do. And, you know, and particularly to experience more of his presence. How many want to experience more of his presence? More of his Holy Spirit. Well, there are things um, only God can do because it's a sovereign move of God. Only he can do that. And he is, you know, doing, there's a sovereign pocket of stuff he's doing all over the world now. Um, and he's, he's already started doing things, even here in Catch the Fire Berry, but it's awesome. And... Um, so we know that we are waiting for that, but really he's waiting for us too. He's waiting for us to be ready for it. He's waiting, ready, waiting for us to say, I'm going to believe and I'm going to step out in faith for what you said. You see, to encounter God, which is a sovereign encounter, a sovereign experience, he wants you to have your heart ready. He says, I want you to get rid of stuff in your heart. Get rid of anger and bitterness, he said. Get rid of um, anything that shouldn't be in your heart. And then also he says, um, we're to worship him and love him with all our hearts. We're to surrender everything to him and let him be the Lord of everything. All of these things, when we do that, then we prepare our hearts to receive him. And so that's what I feel he's doing during this time of COVID. He's trying to get us to say, I'm getting ready. I'm getting my heart ready. I'm, I'm learning to surrender more. I'm learning to say yes to you, God, whatever that is. He wants us to be ready so that when the wave comes, that we will be part of it. How many want to be part of it? Yes. I pictured myself on the top of that wave riding it. You know, woohoo. Well, in order to catch this next wave of the Holy Spirit, isn't it interesting that in COVID we've got the opposite, another wave of the, of the pandemic, you know, third wave, second wave, third wave. Well, we're waiting for the wave of the Holy Spirit. Well, in order to do that, we need a deeper understanding of God's grace. That's why God spoke to Steve to do a message on grace. We need to be able to come to that throne of grace to receive help in our time of need. In other words, to get empowered, to walk through whatever it is he's asked us to, not just to survive it, but to walk through victoriously. That's one thing that grace does for us. But also, it's understanding grace that we can't do this on our own. There's nothing we can do on our own. It's, it's, we have the grace of God that he, has, he is, wants to do things through us because of him, not because of us, not because we earn it. And if, and if we're still believing and don't understand that we're a true son and daughter of God, we're still going to be feeling helpless, hopeless, feeling uh, weak, and like there's nothing I can do, feeling powerless when there's all these things going on around, like the pandemic going on around us and feeling fearful or feeling like we've just got to withdraw into our rooms and just hide and wait it out. That's not what he wants for us. He wants us to be victorious and, as Grace was saying, full of joy in the midst of it all. Yes, Lord. So we need to understand deeper levels of grace and know that we're sons and daughters so that we can walk in the authority that he's given to us. That Jesus imparted it to his disciples and then to us a greater authority in the spiritual realm. And if we don't understand his grace, we can't step into that authority because we feel like, oh, I don't deserve it. Well, no, none of us do. It's because of his grace, not because we earn it. And um, so we also need greater levels of faith if we're going to step into this new era as we cross that Jordan. That's something we need to pick up with us. Are we going to step into greater levels of faith? And as I said, grace and faith working together. Romans 4.16 says, Therefore the promise comes by faith. Have you got promises? You got a promised land? Yes, that we're walking into. It comes by faith, which takes action, so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all of Abraham's offspring. We receive it because of his grace. And we have been grafted in as Abraham's offspring. 
So it's James 2.22 that say faith and action have to go together. Acting on the words of God, on the pros, those, the words of God are prophetic words. Like prophetic words are the words that God speaks to us, sometimes speaking directly to us. His rhema words that are spoken directly to us. And we're going to need those, um, those prophetic words that we grab hold of and do something about it. We're going to need new godly beliefs. No wonder we have to deal with, you know, in some of our ministry times, deal with our ungodly beliefs. Because they're so freeing when you realize the enemy's holding us down with lies. Things that don't line up with the word of God. And we say, well, experience tells me that I can't do such and such. Or that, um, you know, that I'm, I'm, you know, nobody... I don't have a voice. Nobody listens to me. And, and I experience it over and over. So obviously, I don't have anything important for people to say. That's, that's an example of an ungodly belief. That's going to hold you back from really stepping out in the things that God wants you to speak out in his authority. We have to be able to identify the things that do not line up with the word of God and realize these are ungodly beliefs. How did I get them? Through life's experience. Usually we pick up these things when we're about two or three years old. How many know two and three-year-olds aren't really smart? <laughs> yeah, you got any of them? Yeah. And you realize their perception of life can be pretty warped. That's when we picked up ungodly beliefs. And then with life's experience, see, I knew that was right. See, I'm sure that was right. And sometimes we don't even realize them. We so believe these things are true, we hang on to them and can't see them. Someone else has to point them out to us sometimes. And say, did you know that's actually an ungodly belief? <laughs> and then deal with where did that come from? What life experience, what hurt did you go through that caused you to believe those things? We want to get free of those things so we can walk in the authority and the faith, the levels of faith that's going to be required for us as we step into this new era. And uh, declarations that Jeremy talked about should be our new normal of what we speak out and live out. And what was interesting that night um, at Family Zoom, when Jeremy did it, he just, um, as in one of our breakout rooms, he just asked people, okay, I know often we do declare wonderful things and say positive things, but sometimes we get weary. COVID has made a lot of us very weary. It has made me weary. And so it's like sometimes... We get to the point again of doubt, or sometimes just of saying, I hope, or God, please, 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 could you do this? Could you do that? When you know that you're to be making the positive declarations of whatever God speaks in his word and his prophetic words spoken, that we need to stand on and to declare. And we've had to watch our speech, haven't we? Isn't that something we've all been having to learn and struggle with during COVID? The negative things we can come up with, the negative conversations we can have so quickly and jump into so fast, judging each other, judging the government, judging, you know, I mean, we've had to watch ourselves because God's saying you have to come into a new level of positive declaration in order to walk in that authority that I want you to walk in in this new, next new era. He's got things for us to do, assignments for us to do. He wants to empower us to do it, but we're the roadblock because we're still walking around with these ungodly beliefs, with these negative ways of thinking. And he's saying, no, you need to get past those things because I've got an assignment for you a big assignment for you. He wants us, in the book of Revelation, it says we're eventually going to rule the world with him. Whoa. That's the only time we're going to have real true peace, when Jesus is going to be the true king on the earth, and that we will be able to, to rule with him in his righteousness and bring his righteous rule and reign. And he wants us to start practicing doing that right now. Wow. Bringing his truth, his righteousness to this world. Um, and that's an assignment, as I said, for right now, and we need to learn to step out in that authority right now. First Peter 2, 9, this is one of the things we're to declare, and we did this in one of the songs today already. Again, good choice of songs. And that was, you know, all heavens and all the universe declares the glory of God. That declares his holiness. It declares who he is. And again, that's what we're to be doing. First Peter 2, 9, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Sharing those testimonies and making those powerful declarations. Ephesians 6, 20, uh, pray that I may declare, it's talking about um, 
Paul's talking about the mystery of the gospel that he was sharing. And he said, pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. And the Passion Translation, the next part, said, he did this so that you would broadcast his glorious wonders throughout the world. Well, he wants to empower you by the Holy Spirit. He wants to empower you by giving you true revelation knowledge in your heart as to his power, his glory, his wonders. He wants you to experience his power in your life and have testimonies that you can share that no one can refute because it's your testimony. And he wants to empower us to do that, to take that out to the world. Whoa. So he, he wants us to declare his word. And uh, d through the written word that's already right there that he's given to us, but also so through his personal rhema words that he's spoken to us directly or indirectly through someone that, giving a prophetic word over us. Um, when you think about the story of Mary, do you remember when Gabriel came to Mary? This is Luke 137, and told her that she was going to have a baby. Well, that's pretty impossible, right? He said, Nothing is impossible with God. Something I didn't realize until I've just read this this week, that the word, the Greek word actually used there is the word that the angel used was rhema. Rhema meaning that personal word of God. And so what he was, she, this angel was actually saying to her, um, where is it here? Saying, no rhema is impossible with God. Whoa. Have you got some rhema words that God's spoken to you? You know he spoke it to you personally. It's like when the word of God jumps out at the pages of, of the scripture to you and God just speaks it directly to your heart. Or whether it's a prophetic word that's spoken over you and you just know that is God's word for me and I'm going to take it. It's a rhema word. So rhema, um, and the definition of rhema, it's a word that God speaks fresh to us, a personalized prophetic word. It's always going to line up with the Word of God. It's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be contrary or opposite to what the Word of God says. It, instead, it lines it up in our heart. But um, it's a prophetic word or a word of promise that the Holy Spirit breathes fresh anointing on, causing that word to come alive. It's a word that God is speaking directly to us. And this is what the angel said to Mary. Rhema. With rhema, nothing is impossible. How many of you had experienced a time when you were facing a, um, an impossible situation, but God spoke into your heart and told you, it's going to be okay, or this, you know, I'm going to handle this, or just, just wait, or to do this, or not to do this, and you listen to his prophetic word. What that does when you hear God's rhema word in your heart, it gives you faith to believe for the impossible. And that's then when we step out in faith with the impossible things we know God has spoken to us. How many of you experienced impossible things because God spoke a rhyme of word, you acted on it, and you stepped into the fullness of it and saw it? Yay! That's wonder something wonderful to be excited about, isn't it? No rhema is impossible with God. I that, think that's one of the reasons that it's, it's so powerful when we do things like we did two weeks ago, that um, when Jeremy had us, the team come up and give words of knowledge. If God speaks a personalized rhema word... He wants to do something about it, doesn't he? Because, um, and, and I'm going to explain that a little bit more, and that is that rhema words are power-packed. They, um, they carry promises, they carry life in it, and uh, to make it happen. Um, I'm going to read another scripture and explain this a little bit more. Um, Isaiah 55, 10 and 11. This is again the Passion Translation. And it's talking about his words. You know, his thoughts are higher than ours. Um, the things that he does, his ways are so much higher than ours. And it says, As the snow and the rain that fall from heaven do not return until they've accomplished their purpose, soaking the earth, causing it to spread out with, with new life, providing so seed to sow and bread to eat, so also be, will be the word that I speak. And there's God's word, his written word, and his rhema personalized words to us that it doesn't return to me unfulfilled. My word performs my purpose and fulfills the mission I send out to accomplish. Okay, bring out a couple things here. It's biblical me metaphor. You know, we know Jesus speaks in par parables and metaphor all the time and symbolism. And the, the snow is a picture of mercy coming down and just blanketing the earth. 
beautiful picture of it. Rain is a frequent symbol of revelation teaching or knowledge that soaks into the soil of our hearts to make us fruitful. And again, it just as it gets planted in there and it grows seeds, and then we, it, it becomes food that we can give away. And so it's, it's first of all to us and then multiplied out to others. And this comes when we receive those words from God. And that's what it accomplishes, brings life. Well, we know that Jesus is the living word. He's, he's the promise of God's abundant life that was sealed, uh, that, that was sealed by Jesus. He's, that's what he's promised each one of us, and a life abundant. No matter what you're going through in the situations around you, abundant life, that's what he wants us to have in the here and now and experience that. Well, okay, let's look again with um, uh, verse 11 of that, saying, My word performs my purpose and fulfills the mission I sent it out to accomplish. It, it's as though that word has life. It's, and it does. It's, it's, it's almost, it's, it sounds personalized, like it's a person. So that's why I bring out Jesus is a person. He's the word of life. He's the word of God. But also the rhema words he speaks to you have life in it. They have power to accomplish what's happening. So no wonder when we gave those words of knowledge, it was speaking out God's word, it has power to accomplish it. It's not just giving you a thought that that person needs a healing, so now we pray for that person. Power is released through it. When we make words of declaration, power is released into the heavens. There's life in the words we speak. There's life, there's either life or death in the tongue. Remember James says, you know, the, the, there's death in some of the things that we say and speak, speak out over people, and it's like curses over people. There's power in it. There's life in it. It's alive. And so we want to make sure we declare those positive things because they're alive. And we can, by speaking prophetic words, that's one thing I love about them, is it brings life to the person who receives it. It's alive. There's spiritual life in it. So they're power-packed. So Mary, though, had to, um, when she received that word that, uh, with Rama, with God's personal words to you, nothing's impossible with God. She had to act in faith. She had to receive it and say, so she responded by saying, be it done to me as you have said. Wow. I mean, talk about walking into a scary future. You know, and she said yes. She lined her faith with what God was saying to her. Um, and in Isaiah 55 verse 12, Again, talking about coming out of exile, out of the Babylonian exile. It's a promise that God gives to them. That is a promise that applies to us right now. We already started experiencing that today, right? Leave your exile with joy and be led home wrapped in peace. The mountains and hills in front of you will burst into singing. And the trees of the field will applaud. Imagine the trees clapping their hands. Well, what I'm saying is we activate the word. The word has an assignment, but we also have an assignment to act on it and pick up our faith. We, we want to stand on that word. We want to believe it, declare it. Sometimes you're going to have to fight for it. I'm sure we've all experienced that, fighting in the spiritual realm for and contending for the things that God has promised. And then also strategizing together with the Holy Spirit in order to implement those things that he wants to bring about. All right, so it, are you ready to go into the new era? Yes. I'm not. <laughs> I realize I got a long way to go yet. In fact, I thought, you know, do you know, you start talking about this and thinking this and saying, okay, I'm ready, I'm ready, let's go. And then God tests us again. I'll tell you, I had the worst morning before I came here to church today. You know, I, you know, Sean and Vanessa rushing upstairs. And there's an alarm going off downstairs. We've got a flood. The, the septic is backed up. Think, great. I already didn't have time to properly prepare my message. And I wanted to hang with you, Lord, this morning. And now my, you know, it's, it's like, okay, Steve was preaching in grace last week. I got to practice it now. I'm getting tested in it. Do I have grace for this situation? Do I have grace for this interruption in my life again? You know, and it's like, huh, no, I guess I got to learn it all over again. 
And, but the Lord will test us so that he'll show what's really in our heart. He's so kind to show us and reveal the things that are in our heart so that we can bring them into the light. We can get here healing. We can get our readjusted thinking, our, get rid of our ungodly beliefs. He's so kind to do that for us right now, to prepare us and get us ready for this new era. He doesn't want us to not be able to handle it. He doesn't want to give us more than we can cope. He wants us to learn these things now so that we are ready to cross that Jordan with him into this new era of glory. We've had tastes of it, right? We've had tastes of that new era of glory, of it increasing. And we know that that promise is there, and we believe it with all our hearts. So he wants us to step out in it. So why don't you, where you are, why don't you stand up? Get, get out of your comfort zone. That's an act of faith. We're going to take some action here. And again, I was just um, you know, asking the Lord, what do you want us to do today? And I believe he's saying he just wants to challenge some of us again on some areas. And just like we did with that time of declarations. Maybe we're doing a really good job most of the time with declarations of positive ones. Is there an area of your life right now that you can think of? Just ask, get, get tucking with the Lord. Say, Lord, is there an area of my life right now that I really don't have the faith I need? For things that you've spoken or things that I know you want to do, and I just don't have the faith. I'm weary, for one thing. And then also, together with that, Lord, are there some things that I have, even though I've been making some good declarations, are there some declarations I've been making that have not been good? Those ones where I've just been hoping or pleading with you, rather than declaring your will, your word. Is there an area of my life right now, Lord, that you want me to surrender to you so that I can stand on those promises you've made? I feel like the Lord's saying there's some people he's saying, I'm going to challenge you with an action. You might even find it coming up this week. I'm going to challenge you with an action, to put action to your faith, to what you say you believe. He might even prompt you right now as to what that action might be. What step does he want you to take as you step into that Jordan? As we face, turn our faces towards that river and start to go towards it right now, to step into that new place with him, that new normal. Are you ready to put your toes in? Are you ready to go in ankle deep yet? He knows we're not all ready for that yet, and that's okay. There's no condemnation. As a son or a daughter, there's no condemnation in him. He will help us. Just ask him for that help. But then to, it's, the choice is to say my yes to him, just like Mary did. She didn't know how she was going to do that, but she gave her yes. Can you give your yes to him right now? That whatever he's asking you to do, and put your feet in that river, and head towards the other side, even if it means you're looking at a raging river in front of you, are you going to choose to trust him enough to say, if you told me I could get to the other side, then you will make sure I get there. That's been your word, and there's life in your word. There's power in your word. And if you've spoken it, it must be true, because you don't lie. So therefore, I'm going to, to turn my face there, and I'm going to start to walk towards those things that you are telling me to walk to. The territory, stepping into new territories. I want to say yes to you, Lord. Again, he promises if you go to him, you will find grace to help you in your time of need. You will find that empowerment from him. As you come to the throne of grace, to the Father, say, Father, I need your grace. You're empowering to do this. And he knows that we cannot do it on our own. We have to do it through the power of the Holy Spirit upon us as he flows through us. 
See, even right now, again, I'm going to make a declaration. And again, when we recognize these declarations in the spirit realm have life to them. They've got power to them. That his word that goes forth has power to accomplish exactly what he wants it to. And what I'm going to just declare out over right now is declaring he wants right now to empower you greater than ever with the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. He wants to pour that into your spirit. Receive it right now in the depths of your being. Say, yes, I receive that empowering by your spirit. An impartation right now, whether you're online or whether you're here, and you may be at a distance, but I'll tell you, in the spirit realm, there's no distance. And I just declare that into the heavens right now. Fresh empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Whoa, take it, Faye. Take it, Marie. It's for you. Fresh empowerment. Show Betty. Whoa, take it. Fresh empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Let it just flow and land on people right now because you've spoken it, Lord. It's your word, and your word will accomplish what it, you want it to accomplish as it goes forth. Whoa, just receive it right in the depths of your being. I see it going in deep. Yeah, take it, Lori. Whoa, it's going in deep into your spirit right now. An ability to receive it in a way you haven't received his empowering before, to rise up to new levels of faith, new levels of authority in him, new levels of that understanding of grace, new levels of his revelation, truth, and knowledge in your spirit. Well, in the name of Jesus, I just declare it and speak it forth. And right now, I just want to, you to make some declarations right where you are. What is God wanting you to declare and to speak out? Nobody else is going to hear you right now. And we've got the wide open spaces, so you're free to just yell it out. But just make your declarations. First of all, again, we can declare how good God is, no matter what. Just declare that to him. God, you are so good. You've done amazing things in my life. You've done awesome things. You are so in control of all this. You have never lost control. You are in charge. You are so righteous. You're so holy. Just declare out to him who he is and how much you appreciate that about him. Well, as we declare it out, declaring out, start to declare the wonderful things he's already done for you this year, the things he's taught you. Yes, Lord, that you've already done these wonderful things. You've been teaching me about greater patience. You've been and and uh, endurance. Lord, you've you've been teaching me how to be flexible in ways I never thought I could be. Lord, all the things, just speak it out, the things he's taught you that are so good for this year that he's taught you in this pandemic. Whoa, declaring those things out into the heavens. Whoa. And now again, just whatever it is, what is it that God's saying? You haven't been declaring in positive ways. Whoa, if he's already been revealing that to you, just say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for my doubt. Forgive me for not acting on the things that you've spoken to me. Forgive me for losing hope. Forgive me for wallowing in self-pity. Forgive me, Lord, for any ways I've reacted in wrong ways instead of walking in declaration of the things you've spoken over my life. And I just want net right now, again, just to declare over you forgiveness. Speak forgiveness over you for any areas that you have walked in doubt, that you've walked in powerlessness, that you've walked in fear, and I speak it out forgiveness over you. And the Lord says he wants to freshly empower you. And it's like stepping up into that whole new level. So even right now, let's take a prophetic action. We're good at that because, again, something in the physical speaks of the supernatural. I think he wants you to step up into greater levels of faith. You know, do it with me. A step up, whoa, up higher into another level of faith in him. We want to step into another level of understanding of his incredible grace. Can you take that step? Step into another level of understanding of his grace that I am a son and daughter. I don't earn this. It's because I'm a son and daughter, and I'm so loved. There's no condemnation over me. Whoa, I'm going to step up into new levels of godly truth instead of the lies the enemy's been throwing at me. Do you want to take that step? Just take a big step. I'm stepping into the truth of what God says about me, not the lies that the enemy's trying to throw at me. Show. 
I want to step into the new levels of empowerment by the power of the Holy Spirit. So let's take that one last big step. I want to, I'm going to jump on that one. <laughs> jump into the new levels of empowering by the Holy Spirit to walk in new ways, new ways of thinking, new ways of seeing. Lord, we want to step into the spiritual realm, into that whole reality of the spiritual kingdom that's so much greater than the things of this earth. And for some of you too, he might be saying, when you take that step up, throw some stuff behind you. Cast behind you some of those things that you shouldn't be taking with you into that new era. All the worldly value systems that maybe have clung on to us. Our, our attention on things of the world and things of the earth and things that are down here. And instead, turn our attention to heavenly things, things that are priorities for God. Well, so Lord, we do want to step into this new era and experience a greater, greater glory for us personally, for us as a church, for us as church globally, Lord, we want, we know you want to pour out your glory upon this earth so that it's be, be like the waters covering the sea. Your glory, Lord, we want to step into greater levels of your glory. So we want to say yes to you today, Lord. Whoa. Amen. How many want to yell yes with me? Yes. Yes, Lord. Well, okay, well, we want to do invite some of you, again, ministry team, um, you know, especially, you know, um, some of our prophetic team and our ministry team, if you'll come up just over here to this side and also to this side over here and uh, wear your masks and um, just, we want to minister again. It doesn't matter if there is a little bit of distance, you throw the Holy Spirit on them anyway so that people can get a fresh empowering again, a greater level. Now, in, if you have something you want to talk about that it came up today, you want specific prayer for, let the ministry team person know that um, so that you can receive prayer for it specifically. If you just want more in filling of the Holy Spirit, ask for that as well. So ministry team, come up first. I said with your masks on to the side here and to the, up to the side up here. Come on forward. Otherwise, we, you know, for people online, again, we do just you want know, to send that impartation to you right where you're at in your own home, that you'll be, have a wonderful, glorious encounter with him today. And we'll see you next week online or, again, here at Timothy Christian School next week at 1030. Yay. So ministry team. Got one here. Where's our ministry team? Corrine, can we have you guys come up? Corrine and John, and and uh, I saw Carol around somewhere, and uh, Mark and Terry, could I have you come and help to minister as well? No, some over here too. Then come to either side of the stage for some prayer. More Holy Spirit, come, Lord.